Good evening viewers wherever you are watching from whether within Uganda or the diaspora we are glad you have made NTV your number one station. We are also happy that every Saturday you make it to watch your popular program NTV People's Parliament the only platform that gives Ugandans opportunity to speak about issues that affect their everyday life or the policies that affect communities. We are in Lamo district and we are going to speak about a very important topic that does not only affect the people of Lamo district but the entire country, the gender-based violence. I don't know what happens in your district, but the people of Lamo are going to tell us what happens in Lamo district about the gender-based violence. And we want to talk about the effective implementation of gender-based violence laws and policies in Uganda. Are they being implemented or we are sitting down and watching as it goes rampant. I'm your speaker, Agnes Nandutu. Honorable members, you're welcome to NTV People's Parliament, a former tech. <laughs> you're welcome. We are going to speak about gender-based violence. What is happening? Are the men in the mode beating their wives? Are you harassing your children? We want to hear what is happening. But before I get the borrowing, I want to get our partner from Akoford to tell us the statistics on ground, yes. Honorable member, please, from Akoford, you have the platform. Um, Honorable Regina Wafachi representing Akford constituency. Uh, in Lamo district, we have a number of uh, cases of gender-based violence that have been reported over the period of uh, the financial year 2017-2018. And we have noted that uh, there are different forms of violence that include physical violence, emotional violence, physical violence, and sexual violence. Uh, in the reporting period, Honorable Speaker, we have 616 uh, physical violence cases reported, and uh, we have 337 then uh, on economic violence, then we have uh, 116 physical, uh, psychological, and emotional violence, and then we have 93 uh, cases of sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Honorable Speaker... And those are the reported ones? Those are the reported ones. There are ones. those that go silent. And there are those that go silent, Honorable Speaker. And we have also noted that while there are cases of this nature, we have also noted there are challenges with regard to implementation of the laws that are supposed to be helping us to address this he says, and that is the Domestic Violence Act and the National Policy on Gender-Based Violence. Honorable Speaker, uh, together with our partners on the ground and uh, the partners, particularly TROCRA and uh, the regional advocacy groups, have been able to monitor the last quarter and have been able to establish that actually in Lamo district, there are challenges related to implementation of the two pieces of legislation. Honorable Speaker, we've, we've established that, uh, for example, and generally, that there is inadequate resource allocation to the key uh, sectors and sections that are supposed to be handling cases of uh, sexual and gender-based violence. Honorable Speaker, I have also noted that there is inadequate coordination of the sectors. We have also noted that there is uh, uh, limited reporting of the cases, Honorable Speaker. Mm -hmm. But Honorable Speaker and members of uh, the August House, we've also noted that Beyond the reporting, beyond the inadequate resources, Honorable Speaker, there is uh, a problem of culture where people do not report. Honorable Speaker, the women fear reporting, and there is also apathy among the citizens that they actually do not report when they watch when a woman or a girl is being beaten. And Honorable Speaker, that is something I think this House needs to discuss uh, okay. greatly. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I would like to say that mm. this year, just like other years, uh, Uganda will be joining the, the rest of the world to commemorate 16 days of uh, activism against gender-based violence. And the theme for this year is uh, GBV in the workplace. And I'm hoping that in 
this house, honorary speaker, we are going to discuss ways and means of how we can address workplace-related gender-based violence. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank honorary you. speaker. Thank you, honorary members of LAMO. You need to break the silence about gender-based violence. Why are you keeping quiet while you're being battered? Why do you keep quiet when your neighbor is being battered? It's time to break the silence. Um, the district leadership, please tell us why you're not implementing these laws of gender-based violence. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and the honorable members of this August House. Uh, my name is Amone Jimmy. I'm in for the district chairperson. I'm the speaker of the district council. As reported by ACFORD, as a district, we do acknowledge that there's a lot of gaps as far as implementation of the laws that fight gender-based violence. But however, we are not just sleeping. We have uh, a number of uh, action points that we have developed as a district. And one is in terms of uh, allocation of budget. Uh, in our budget, the allocation of funds in our budget, but of course is limited because as a young district, uh, it will not be enough at the moment. But we also have uh, sensitization going on. I'm happy that among us, you, the audience, we have the honorable members of the district council, whom time and again we discuss these issues in the council, and they are up and around going on discussing and sensitizing our community. But as the problems they have noted, others things to do with culture, uh, things to do with... Uh, what does your culture determine here about gender-based violence? Of course, you know, with the cultural perceptions of our people, in that, uh, for example, a man is taken as the control of the whole family. And when so you he can says beat your wife at any time. And when he says something, hmm. you don't have to argue against it. If not, and you also understand that we also have the traditional forms of marriages, when someone is paid dowry and, and, and is brought to a home, you don't have to now talk uh, as, as, a, as a mother, as a, as a wife to that home. Mm -hmm. So that also affects the impl implementation of the laws. And also the women sometimes, of course, they adhere to that because they don't want to go away uh, from that family. And maybe where they have been, they have been having difficulties at their homes. So they come and sometimes keep silent on that. But however, I think the most important thing to note is that... Uh, it is just lack of awareness to our women uh, who undergo sometimes persevere with this kind of uh, violent violence. It is lack of awareness and this is where we call on you, uh, the different partners, uh, that we, st we join hands with the district uh, council into sensitizing our community and letting them be okay. aware of, okay. of the, the situation. Thank you, my counterpart. Thank speaker. you. But as the district speaker. leadership, please take the lead in educating the people, mobilizing the people. And mostly men to stop beating their wives. We are taking yes, the lead. Thank you, Madam audience. Speaker. Can I have the women now? The culture refuses women to go and accuse the man when he abuse a woman sexually. Because if in our culture, when you, a woman, make any mistake to go and abuse a man that a man has left me, you are foolish. That is the time even the clan can gather and chase you away because you have ashamed them. Even if you go to, back to your home and you report that they will ask you, where have you run away? You say, my husband left me, then they say, you are a very foolish girl. Where have you got this man? <laughs> so we are suffering on this issue so, so much. Alcohol, man, men are doing sexual abuse to women. And you find that a woman of 30 years can have like even eight children. 30 years. Because when they drink, they even have no control. Eh. After bathing, you're already demanding. He will just all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My name is uh, Adon Kenasaroko, a female councillor for Maripe and Paloga in the district council of Lamoa. Madam Speaker, gender-based violence in the law is real. The serious beating of women in the law. What causes all this? Our men are drinking too much alcohol. Yes. The mayor, why 
empower men over drinking and sexual harassment. <laughs> 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 I stand before you here, not just to defend men, but honestly in Lamour, it is true that even women do drink. I do not disagree that men do not drink, but that is not, it is not enough to say men, the, the, the gender-based violence in the community that we are facing, it is only because men do drink a lot. Even women drink. Me, I come from Padibet Town Councils, whereby it is almost on, after every two days, we will receive cases. Whereby sometimes a man... But for them, even if they drink, they don't come back and beat you up. They beat, madam. Hey. <laughs> they beat, but only that for us we fear. You know, in our culture, if a woman beats you and you mention it out, people will laugh at you. So if a woman beats me in my house, I just only keep quiet. But secretly, one of my brothers or at least somebody from the community, I will tell him that, you know what, this woman beats me a lot. And there could be some community or a sort of a clans meeting within the house. Okay, so yeah, it is true thank that men that do drink, but even women drink a lot. Some women also drink, but for them they are hard working compared to men. I would like to recognize and thank Uganda Women's Network that built the capacity of the female councillors. We have been moving around. We gather all this information from the But classroom. is it true that you also harass the husbands in the house? Silently? Of course. Uh, sometimes you need to defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but not common. Yeah. Madam Speaker, it is not common, please. Yeah. Here in Lamor, there's high rate of poverty. Our people, our community, still very poor. So, you know, when a family is poor, they don't have money, they cannot send children to school. Automatically, there's violence in that family. So, I think uh, those are the causes of uh, violence in our community. Okay. And also they are still illiterate. Um, uh, we have negative impact in the family. Once there is gender-based violence in the family, that family cannot go to school. And more so the girl-child education is mostly affected, Madam Speaker. There is high rate of Girl child drop out from school in Lamor here. Okay. Our girls are not yet going to school because sometimes uh, when a mother is chased away from home, automatically a girl child who is elder in that family has to take charge for that family. Okay. She has to look for the children, okay. for the younger one. Thank you, Honorable. So, I will give you another put into another time. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have heard the people of Ramo. They, they are very open. They are breaking the silence about gender-based violence. But what is more interesting that the women here can also defend themselves. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we shall hear more from the people. Welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Lamo District, chaired by none other than your speaker, Agnes Nandoto. We are speaking about gender-based violence in Lamo District. It is true that uh, men drink, but when you see also the rate which men, women drink, it is almost close to what men drink, the percentage. <laughs> um, all along, this thing always begins towards the harvest period. The harvest period, this is when... Uh, People, when we pick uh, crops from, from the garden during the sale of these uh, women want to gather all the money and they keep the money for themselves. Though men also would also need something. This is one thing which uh, we always uh, have it as a problem. So and when she uh, tries to keep the money, you demand for it and that ends yeah, in yeah, violence. Yeah, that's uh, during uh, the harvest period when we sell the crops, uh, the, the, the foodstuff which we have already got and uh, the, the money which... Uh, we always uh, use one is for paying children and uh, the other one is uh, the, the medical bill and this is what uh, uh, happened but we have been taking charge by sensitizing uh, our community over the radio mm. this is one over the radio this is uh, how we should handle uh, the, we should handle the income which we, we always uh, we always uh, get secondly as the district we have also allocated budget for, 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 for sensitization by, by, the, by, by the district uh, officials. And even during the gathering, 
This is what we always do. We also mention everywhere where men and women go, the leaders go, we always uh, uh, give uh, this, uh, we sensitize the community about the gender-based violence which affects. One is uh, going out of school. Secondly, uh, the productivity, the productivity of, uh, will also lower because uh, the crops, uh, during, the, uh, during the cultivation, we shall not uh, have the good heal because uh, people will be moving out of, uh, people will be moving out and maybe man as he's there, or a man gets frustrated also, he may not be going to the garden. This is one thing which I want to say, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm called Honorable Ogiki Joseph Dakas. I'm representing the people of Padiba Health Center 4. Madam Speaker, I'm here to say that no man can beat his sweetheart without any problems. <laughs> if you see the main, the main issues here is the behaviors of the woman. Yeah. If you come during the auction day, when there's an auction here, Madam Speaker, you find that the auction is full with women. And all these women are with their children at their back. You find men is holding both the woman and the child. <laughs> whom is he dancing with? <laughs> and then if a man finds a woman dancing with a child at the cold day with, the, with another man, will you not beat? <laughs> will you not beat? So I feel that the behavior of women should be number one. They should change their culture. Women are supposed to stay home and look after the children and take care of the children. You are not supposed to move at night and go for the disco. Another one, Madam Speaker, even us as men, we are also, we have also a mistake. You find that we have deviated from our duty. We men, we are supposed to go and dig. We are supposed to look for school fees. You find that all these issues of work, of digging, are the women doing. The women are now looking for school fees. And then, a woman will feel annoyed. And when you come home, the good reception which you are supposed to have, you will not have it. Hmm? That is why this, the, our, our, our women... She can't they, even fulfill the conjugal Exactly. Right. That is why I sometimes say that if a man go, he, he, he want to go in hurry. Huh? Because, the, the, because the woman will not feel uneasy. Huh? Because she, she will not allow you freely. But if you were supposed, if you were digging and you were looking for school fees, you give the money. If even you come, just a mere touch, she will give you. She will give you. She will give you. So the biggest problem that if men, if we men can do our duty, we can do our duty, we, I, I, I think women will give us the respect and they we shall never beat. And these issues of violence will it really will end. Stop. Thank you. Honey Thank you. Madam Thank you. That was good submission. Madam Speaker and the Haggard House, I'm by the name Doreen Lakomekech, a representative of women of Palabek Game Sub County in the District Council. I would like to emphasize on economic violence uh, that results into gender-based violence. Uh, in Lamo, we have uh, analysis of uh, data, as you can see from the statistic given. We have other sub-counties like Lokung and Padibe, which is mostly faced with economic violence. Uh, we have a situation of Lamo, which is economically based uh, uh, with the agriculture as the livelihood of the people of Lamo. You find during reproduction, I mean production period, women and men are engaged uh, in those activities together. But when uh, the crops are collected home, uh, the ownership or the one in charge are now the men. They take all the money. They keep all the, the products and the selling is mainly governed by men. Then they go for other women. And they go for women around. <laughs> After selling the products, they, they get the money and marry another woman. That brings about domestic violence. And also when they sell, they go drinking. 
they want to hijack the money that of course they tend to respect the women to keep the money but after entrusting they withdraw the money bit by bit they want to finish drinking and marrying outside that brings a lot of violence thank you and also i want to emphasize madam speaker that because of uh, deprivation deprivation of rights to own properties like for example uh, those products of agriculture and more to emphasize on women's land rights we are really denied the right to own land especially of other resources okay. in such a way that women don't have those rights and they end up landless and also homeless after maybe breaking your marriage that is one challenge we have in our culture godfrey opart representing people of agor sub county in lamua uh, i want to say that uh, when we look at all the issues that pertains gender-based violence for me i would actually say this is a 50 50 situation in the in the district How? why why do i say this because now we may actually acknowledge that at some point t you'll actually find that a particular in a particular sub country you'll actually find maybe a family has a particular program with a man not a woman and another case you'll actually go to a woman so in this case you'll actually realize for instance my brother actually who came earlier said that women are also involved in drinking now you'll imagine that the source of income that we have in our community is based on the uh, the crop production that we have. So we sell so that we get some of the money which is used to take care of the family. Unfortunately, a woman will actually pick part of the, part of the food stuff that she would actually want to sell and use the money to subsidize for other things. And in the course of doing that, they do much more than what is necessary. And the balance is actually used for drinking. Now, if I'm this kind of man who depends on agriculture, year in, year out, I do the needful, I have food stuff in the, in the house, and for you, you just sell and misuse the money. What will actually come into my mind? Somehow, it will actually create a situation. And because of but that... But you can devise other ways of solving these things, other than uh, beating. Unfortunately, we have individual differences, and you cannot actually dictate on how someone would actually have to behave. So that actually brings in that kind of things. Then another thing that I want to put forward is also there. There is also this tendency of acceptance of inferiority complex. So much as we talk about this, we need, need to empower our women and have them actually stand on their own. There are some of them who literally accept that they are vulnerable and they cannot face the reality. And that explains why they actually become victims. And this created a situation. Now, away from that, Madam Speaker. Why I that, please, when I remember? Yeah, 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 sure. I actually wanted to emphasize the fact that uh, we have challenges regarding who implements what and how. Look at the policemen. We have cases that are always reported to the police. And before you know it all, the victim is actually released before any action is actually taken. And that brings problem. Another thing is also lack of follow-up by our So community. the police is not doing its work? I, I, I think so. They are not doing much, much work that they are expected of them. Another thing is also failure of the victim to follow up cases. Because now if you send information and you don't follow it up, no one will actually take care. We will assume that this person is actually innocent and that is why. Uh, he has not actually been taken care of. Police officer, please, you are not doing enough to fight gender-based violence here in Lamo district. Uh, the gentleman was loud and clear, but police, they are doing their best because uh, I am three years old in Yacholi sub-region. I've worked in Madiope, uh, where, by, where this gentleman comes from, Lukini Agoro. Agoro even is rated the worst in gender-based <laughs> violence. <laughs> I can give very many examples, but the time is not enough. Please give us. It will take me a lot of time. <laughs> Averagely, I have been in Ilukongo. The way how... First of all, in Madiope, a man was killed, and they said he died of TB. I myself, I went physically to bury after drinking a lot in one of the villages in Madiope. I have now been transferred here in Lukung, Lukung outpost in Uledi. I have registered cases where women butter men. It is a seven out of 34. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, honorable, honorable, honorable.
Order, 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 honorable members. Afande, so what are you doing to implement the laws on gender-based violence as police? We are really trying. Of recent, since I have been here, I see Ackford is in the forefront. There is WLF, something like that. Uh, there is uh, ARC, there is ARC. They are helping us a lot in actually solving gender-based violence uh, cases by providing us with the Police Form 3, Police Form 3A, Police Form 24, and others. And they are soon implementing into, I think, transport system. That is where we get problems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Afande. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm Honorable Sofina Peonjuba from the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. I'm happy about the discussion that we've had, bringing out the cases of gender-based violence and how extreme it is in Lamo district. Madam Speaker, I have a concern that goes to the district leadership. We have all these cases and we've reported about them, but the financing to address some of these cases is still very low. For example, we undertook a, a monitoring that my honorable member talked about earlier on, Madam, Honorable Bafachi. She said there is inadequate financing, and that was seen in our monitoring. Lokung Sub-County, for example, allocates only 400,000 shillings to sensitization and addressing GBV issues in the CDO's office. Madam Speaker, how, what is 400,000 shillings going to do for an entire sub-county where we have people who are drunk beating each other? people who are not taking children to school, all these are cases that are coming up. And that is not only for the, the CDO's office, police also. Police, the most they are given is a motorcycle. Follow up the cases. Find your fuel. We have people reporting day and night, and they don't have the facilitation to go to these, to arrest the perpetrators, for example, uh, even keeping the perpetrators themselves. Madam Speaker, I think this is an area where we need to look into ourselves from the district leadership and also generally from government to finance these offices that deal with gender-based violence yes. so that we improve the sensitization but also go further ahead to seeing how these cases are addressed in our communities. And also a call to ourselves as honorable members, I want to call upon us to go to our constituencies and encourage our people look out for each other but also if someone has reported a case try to follow up on these cases some of them are dropped because we do not excuse me follow up on them which is also a problem that is affecting okay. and making GBV grow more and more in our communities okay. thank, you. thank you thank you honorable members I think you have heard it is time that will ensure that we reduce, we might not bring it to an end, but we might reduce gender-based violence in our homes, in our communities, in our district, and also in our, our country. I think you have heard the people of Labo speaking about gender-based violence in their district. Don't go away, NTV. People's Parliament comes back shortly. Yes, welcome back. You are still watching your favorite program, NTV People's Parliament, sitting here in Lamo District discussing gender-based violence in our communities. And according to the people of Lamo, it is actually rampant. And honorable members, I want us to find a way forward. What can we do as a district? Are you implementing the laws? Is the police doing its work? Are the councillors doing their work? What can we do to ensure that these policies on gender-based violence are implemented effectively in this district. Yes, Mayor. Madam Speaker, it is true what people have talked about here, they're all right. I do not disagree with any. But as leaders, these are some of the things that we normally come out with it. One is to sensitize our communities. We normally do this in our meetings. We normally go deep down in parishes, in villages, to sensitize our communities how they should handle their related, affairs related issues. Two, we normally also empower sometimes our church leaders. The way how they have to preach in the church, in churches, they have to talk about love, 
They have to preach the gospel of good news and other things. Because one reason is here whereby people even beat themselves, sometimes even a reception. Some of our women, not all, some of our women, when a husband come back, even from either workplace or somewhere, especially when she's already tips that Solomon might be engaged with somebody somewhere. Before you even reach home, she already starts the quarreling. Those kind of things. So we have a very poor communication skills in welcoming men back home. When they are tired, when they are from their work, they are whatever. So we need also to preach this gospel to women that when your husband comes back home, please give him the good words. Tell him, sweetie, Even if you have seen back. him with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> it may not necessarily be that probably you had been with somebody. Those could be rumors. But you might have been somewhere else with even somebody different. But before even digging down the detail of this thing, see, it starts, it is on record, Madam Speaker. We have this in Lamo. Our people, they are very rude. Not even about even the welcome water. They mood alone. When somebody, they call it Sumbusa. You come back on and the person has tied the Sumbusa, mm, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that shall also bring into some psychological torture. Okay. Because gender-based violence, it is not on a beating somebody physically. But even the psychological torture, a man end up probably running away from home, where probably sometimes he would, give, he would get good reception. You come back home, at least there is something here, you, you take it up, leaving behind your children now. This is basically what is in Lamoa here. Thirdly, Madam Speaker, what we are also trying to do as leaders. Though we have limited resources in terms of budget, but we are trying as much as possible to also use our councillors to engage in these small, small issues. Before taking to the police, let's first sit down as families and we talk. Because some other families, they do not even have the capacity to have meetings among themselves. You'll find somebody wrongly has been accused somewhere, taken to the police, they may come and arrest, detain there, and getting out, definitely, sometimes they have to cough something small. Kidu kidogo. It is there. And all these things brings poverty to the families. If you have solved these issues, before taking it to the police, you either use your counselor or even the chairperson LC1. That sometimes they even ignore. People want issues to be solved by the police all the time. And police may not even have the capacity to come to, 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 to check on what is going on because of limited resources that they have. I beg to submit. Thank you very much. I'm called Zako Dokas. I'm the magistrate grade one. I was deployed in Padibe, but overseeing Lamo. Madam Speaker, I have a point of information. There is little or I have not heard of anything to do with a girl child. Madam Speaker, I have a record here from my court from March 2016 to November 2018. I have 70 registered cases of defilement, aggravated defilement, rape, attempted rape, child to child sex, and aggravated defilement between by juvenile. Yeah. So in total, I have 70. What does that one say? So? so it means our fathers, our guardians, they are using our little children. That is one of the examples of actual sexual. So there is rampant defilement of girls in Lamoni. Yes, Madam Speaker, the figure here, this is so far the ones which have reached which court but that those which have been negotiated at police mm -hmm. and if we were to do the follow-up many of the parents in Lamo are going to be prosecuted for negotiating defilement mm -hmm. take it from me there's a law the penal code act outlaws negotiation of defilement mm -hmm. if that issue reaches police and you are arrested you'll face life imprisonment so when you are sensitizing people, please tell them to desist from negotiating defilement cases because they are spoiling this little child. Don't you want to see your girls like to come and stand before other people in other districts like I do? Mm -hmm. What is the future of the young girls? Mm -hmm. So that leads again to early marriages. Mm -hmm. If you go around Lamo district, I get very many baby mothers who come to court as a result of defilement. Because, because of the defilement, they are impregnated. So they have all these 
the whole system is, the future of the girl child in Lamo is worrying. Yeah. So as leaders, you really need to sensitize your people because they're ignorant about the laws. I also add the civil society organizations, please, it is really very much needed. Okay. Thank you, Madam Thank Speaker. Thank you. That is from the magistrate. Madam Speaker, uh, Lamont District is a bit crazy <laughs> because of the behaviors of our people. It is crazy. At the, at the, the grassroots. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, I have seen a number of men who are defending. Let us not talk to defend men. Let us look at the real issue on the ground. If we want to address the issue of gender-based violence in Lamo, uh, one of the causes of gender-based violence in Lamo, it is most of the men always fails to, to support women in providing cares to our families. My proposal, let us have a continuous engagement with the women's structure like we have the women's caucus. As the district leadership, let us try to engage with these caucus so that we find the real issues on the ground. Then we, we, we move together to find uh, the issue of gender-based violence in Lamo. We should not defend. I come from a Dibet town council and I am one of those who record gender-based violence cases reported. The man has already reached. I will be receiving one case every day in my office. So it is a reality, and most of the GBV cases reported are perpetrated by men. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I don't want to overemphasize that one now because people have talked about. But I want to say uh, there is weakness, especially in punishing the perpetrators. I uh, carried with me uh, a copy of the Domestic Violence Act 2010. And when I came to section six, uh, clause five, you will see the kind of punishment that is supposed to be administered to the uh, perpetrators. One, A, is caution. What does it do? <laughs> Another one is apology to the victim. Another one is counseling. Another one is compensation, reconciliation, declaration. What does that one do? Very These weak people weak. who are reported to government offices are people who have already met caution at home. They don't need to be cautioned again. They need to go to prison. They need to go to prison. <laughs> that is it. Yes. Why do you caution this person? Mm. So that is a big problem. So. So we should strengthen our laws. Exactly. Yeah. So actual point that I want to share right now is actually one, mainstreaming GBV in all interventions of the district. Whether it be we are opening roads, GBV must be part of that. Even if we are distributing seats like the Operation Wealth Creation uh, Coordinator always do, we must make sure GBV comes in we mainstream GBV, then we'll be able to uh, reduce. Otherwise, as other people talk, the money allocated for this activity is almost not there. Sometimes you only see it in figures. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm called Auma Mary. I'm the gender officer of the district, but also in charge of children matters. And uh, I'm glad that the magistrate brings out a pertinent issue about the girl child. And as part of the information, according to the national census, we have registered 1,131 cases of child marriage mm. all over the sub-counties in Lamo. What is that to us? So that is also another question that we have to think about. And in terms of strategy, because Madam Speaker, you have asked about the way forward. Many times, programs have targeted the women directly and they are labeled su su survivors or victims. But I bring on board another idea of involving men who are the would-be perpetrators. How come if we ask the men 
to champion the process of change. And they go to the clan leaders who themselves are uh, embedded with decision making. So if they go and talk to the fellow men who are clan leaders that really violence against a woman or gender-based violence is bad. And I think by practice, a man will listen to a fellow man. But if us women, we go and say, ah, you are beating us like one of us is saying, that uh, women are the ones who, uh, who tie sumbusa. What about having a flexibility in this, that when a wife is coming back home, you the husband, what is your role in welcoming her back? Mm. Eh? <laughs> and at the end of the day, they want to be happy. Yeah. Eh? And yet it, it comes with a lot of things to do. Okay. And uh, in terms of funding, we will we, we'll not like to say that uh, we are actually uh, hand-tied. I think the problem comes from very many angles. But we are also partnering. And I think I want to thank Ackford for bringing this platform on board. And CSBAG, I think it is a cons consortium. Oh, okay. But we also have local partners on ground, and we are doing a lot of sensitization. If you go to the refugee settlement, I think you are aware that we have also refugees. Mm -hmm. There are many partners that are also working in the area of ending gender-based violence. Thank so we, those are the funds also. There are also the resources that we also hinge on mm -hmm. to perform our, our important role okay. in the country. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm proposing the following recommendations. Uh, with regard to police, I would like to suggest that we strengthen community policing and include issues that relate to GBV, the police bond. You talk about the scarce resources and see how the community can support the police. We would also like to propose that with many partners that are working in the district, let's make sure that we avail the different copies of the Domestic Violence Act and the National Policy on Gender-Based Violence. But this should be in a user-friendly language for everyone to understand. And of course, we appreciate the role that is played by the clan leaders and the religious leaders, and therefore, their capacity building together with the police is very, very important. Let's go back to the basics of parenting. The basics of parenting, the basics of what a good family is, is very important. That does not require us to have resources. Sit down, talk about issues of gender-based violence within your family, issues of child marriage, issues of defilement. It's a shame that you can actually sit and have your daughter be defiled and then you negotiate. Uh, lastly, the local councils, the local council leaders have been brought on board and they are, in most cases, the first contact for the people who experience violence. Is it possible for us to have them uh, trained? Because they are very key in addressing uh, issues of GBV. Thank you, honorable members, for being part of this parliament. Because of time constraints, we can continue. But I'm happy that you have uh, deliberated on this issue very well. Thank you for breaking the silence, most especially women. Thank you for coming out to speak about this uh, evil that we need to reduce. A foil my take. A foil my take. Uh, a foil bino. A foil bino. Yes, thank you for watching NTV People's Parliament. We shall do everything to ensure that we reduce gender-based violence in Ramo District. I am your speaker, Agnes Nandutu, and I aspire to inspire you before I expire. With powers conferred upon me as the speaker of People's Parliament, I add Jan Sousa until next Saturday. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.